Yes, very relaxing. That is what I like to do. Enjoy my fire. Yep, yep, yep. Hey guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Good morning, Chad. Good morning, Miss Rachel. Oh, wow, I've got like major hunting hair. I should have looked before I got, went live. <laughs> Oh, it's one of those days. It's one of those times. It's really crazy. God is good. You are so right. I'm I'm anxious to hear the story behind that one, but he is always good, and I totally agree with that. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Fixing the hunting hair. I was hustling to get out here and <laughs> didn't look in a mirror. The beauty of live video. Okay, so how are you guys? Oh, it has been an absolute insane whirlwind here at our house but as Chad said God is good and that is what I am holding on to oh you poor thing you're still stuck in bed ah everybody lift up prayers for Chad and his son Christian because they are sick Christian's probably well now correct <laughs> it was one of those that it got passed down the line there so poor Chad that's no fun being sick Uh, but there's there's actually quite a few people we need to be praying for um, let me open up my notes here okay um, one of our friends also just uh, posted that uh, oh that's so weird there it is okay good um, Steve Hill and his wife Candy um, we need to keep them in prayer. Um, Steve has been in and out of the hospital all year with infections that they just can't seem to get a handle on. And he was home and doing well, and now he's got MRSA again. So um, keep him in your prayers, and, and of course Candy as well. Oh, exactly, Chad. So Christian is well, and now you're the one that's green and not well. Praying for you. Good morning, Miss Courtney. Um, but definitely keep them in your prayers. Um, we also have a couple others. Um, keep Courtney and Kelly and Mike in your prayers. They are waiting for medical results and it has been excessively long and that just tends to get, um, get hard. Hang on one second. Copper, Copper, come here. Leave the cat alone. I heard this weird sound. Come here. No, lay down. Lay down and do not knock my tripod over. Lay down. You're making me have to scold you on live video. <laughs> Lay down. Lay down. All the way. Thank you. Now stay there. Okay. Dang kids. All right. So there we go. Oh, good morning, Terry. Terry is also um, someone else we want to keep in prayer. He has been asking for prayers for he and his wife, June. And uh, we also need to keep Terry in prayer. He uh, injured his shoulder um, volunteering uh, for Rubicon, and uh, that was a couple months ago, and he's gonna have surgery November 5th, correct, Terry? I think that's the right date. November 5th or November 9th? Forgive me, my brain is like, this last couple weeks, ooh, cut it out. <laughs> gave me a heart attack too. I got my fire going and it snapped and she jumped like she was gonna land on my lap. It made me jump. Okay, um, but he, uh, Terry's having surgery on his shoulder and I would like to um, openly request that we pray because his wife June is going to come and care for him. I would like to have you guys all join me in this so that we can watch the miracle. Um, that God uses uh, this time uh, to renew and, and heal his marriage when they are able to be together. So uh, please, please, please help me pray for that. Um, also keep Chad in, in prayer, um, not only for um, sickness, but renewal. And um, Charles Lovell needs some prayers. Um, he's got a lot on his plate, I guess, right now. And uh, Janice Snow's son needs prayer. They're all listed down below if I'm going too fast. 
These are just some of the more important ones that I wanted to mention. Our list is very long. They are all important. These are just some that have recently come in. Um, if you could keep Austin in your prayers, um, I've been in communication with him. Last Wednesday when I met up with you guys, I was at Mountain Bends. Um, that was my midway point um, after dropping Austin off um, and uh, it's just been a whirlwind since so he is doing really well but the first month they say is always the hardest and we're finding out why it's just really slow and very boring and there is not a whole heck of a lot to do unless you smoke which is pretty sad in my opinion, but that's how it is, uh, the way it's set up. So um, just pray. Um, we sent him some care packages this week uh, so that he has uh, some other more wholesome things to do because that is not his thing at all. Um, even standing around in that situation, he just doesn't like the smell of smoke. So can't blame him. I don't either. Um, so if you could just keep him in prayer there, actually, I think it's today. Um, he messaged that they were going, but I didn't, I didn't know if they, he meant today or in the future, but they are going to a museum um, on a trip, so that's actually good and distracting. Um, good morning, Dawn. I can't stay, but so nice to see you. We'll pray for Terry. Thank you very much, Dawn. Glad you were at least able to pop on. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, Miss Mona. And Rachel says her marine is deployed. We will keep him in prayer also. And George, good morning. Keep George in prayer. He's under the weather also. So, oh, okay, I'm taking a breath here. It has just been insane. My pickup truck when I came home, we got home Wednesday night. I got home at 6 o'clock. Um, the mountain man has our solar disconnected uh, because he concreted our solar room while I was gone. And um, while I was gone, we were able to sell some things. So we used some of that money to purchase what we needed to put the solar batteries in. Of course, that was supposed to be here Monday. Now it's supposed to be here today. So we're still, that's what you hear is a generator running. Um, so it's been a little bit more of a costly week for us because we are having to run the generator and we have had intermittent power and intermittent connections to the world. Um, which has actually been fine. Um, that break has been good, but we've also been hunting every day. So, like I said, it's just been a whirlwind. So Wednesday night I get home and I had a whole truck bed full of potatoes. I have no idea how many hundreds of pounds of potatoes, but we uh, worked till about 11, 30, 12 o'clock to unload those. We had built a, uh, a potato bin and then, and then boxed them from the truck into the potato bin. So, and it's just been like that ever since. So that was last Wednesday. Thursday started hunting season. So every morning and every evening we've been out. Um, last Thursday was our bull season. So it has to be an antlered uh, elk. Uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow is our cow season. And of course, Sunday evening I got to watch some cows roaming around and I couldn't shoot them it was really cool to see I've seen some really awesome awesome stuff being out in the blind so stay tuned for our YouTube channel I've got like probably 25 videos that need to go live uh, between what I'm behind on and also what we've been recording so it has just been such a crazy crazy blur um, and and when we're not um, hunting we're coming back and quickly doing what we need to do and then we need to go back out for the evening hunt so I'm very grateful for our lifestyle I'm very grateful that we have this opportunity one of the reasons we are really focusing on this is because the freezer is empty and um, we've got lots of potatoes so now we need meat to go with the potatoes so made a really good batch of potato soup with bacon and celery and onions man was that good of course you have to throw all that bacon grease in there too <sighs> don't let them tell you that bacon grease is fattening it's just flavorful I didn't gain a pound and I ate just about the whole pot <laughs> so how many of you guys hunt I want to talk about this because we were at a trapping class a couple weeks back and they were talking about preparedness and, and being careful while they're out on the line. So I just realized that my um, messages aren't popping right. 
Wish I was out there with you guys. I know, the weather's been great. Although, you're not gonna miss anything now because it's rain for the next like two weeks. So, you're not gonna miss anything now. But, uh, it has been nice, it has been nice. Today's kind of balmy. Um, I've been all dressed in wool hunting gear. I had to come back today and uh, take about seven layers off because it was just too warm. <laughs> but um, when the trapping class was talking about preparedness while out trapping, um, it, was, it was good, but one thing that's really important to remember is that your safety and your livelihood is the most important thing while you are out in the wild hunting or trapping. So if you think big on what on your sport and you're not thinking big on your well-being, um, you're gonna have issues out there if something happens. You want to make sure you're prepared. You don't want to just, you know, my hunting pants. I've got I've got my my pocket knife. I've got a lighter. Um, my 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 pants are like busting at the seams because I've got all kinds of stuff in here and I've also got a um, butt pack that I carry that has all kinds of paracord, um, baby wipes and toilet paper, you know, um, my LED light, uh, my knife, uh, I've actually got three knives with me uh, because when I do get something, I am going to have to get it. I am going to have to get it open and cooling off. Um, but also, just when you're out there, if something happens, you need to be sure that you're prepared. I also have a non-reusable space blanket in my um, butt pack as well. And I carry water with me in a stainless steel container so that if I am stuck and I need to get more water, I can get water and, and sterilize it in the stainless steel container that I'm putting it in. So when you go out and, and you are out in the wilds for a, a long period of time, you know, you need to be prepared. Something else that we need to think about out here is when you shoot, there's the likelihood that a wolf may come into that shot. So you need to be prepared to be able to handle you know, other, other predators that might be coming in for the animal you just shot. So being protected with backup ammunition, backup uh, firearms, bear spray. You know, my girlfriend is hunting in Wyoming and she was sharing with me that she was hunting in a draw where there's grizzly bear tracks. And you know, you, you've got to be careful. We also have mountain lions out here, you know, and, and coyote. Coyote, typically, they're going to run off to the voice, but on occasion you'll get a young one that'll come into the voice. I've actually had to pop off a couple shots when I was walking the dogs because of that. So, you know, you need to be prepared when you're out there. You know, hunting is a great thing to be able to fill your freezer with meat, but if you're doing it carelessly, you could end up out in the woods, you know, and stuck out there. So, and when you're trapping, you're trapping in places, trapping season runs from now into like February. So you're running in the months where things are frozen and cold. Um, you could be breaking through ice and, you know, ending up getting wet. That is really, really dangerous. That could happen while you're hunting too. And even though the temperatures today are kind of balmy, it's, it's damp. It was damp this morning. So you fall into a creek or a stream and you don't have any means of creating fire, you're going to end up with hypothermia. So you really truly need to think about that. If you are new to hunting and trapping, that is something that should be the first thing you think about is your safety, your well-being. Um, a lot of times when the mountain man um, was trapping, if he was using the snowmobile, he would have a uh, dry bag. It's a type of bag that you can roll the top up and cinch down and it in essence can't water can't get in it so he would have extra clothes in there sometimes he'd have a sleeping bag in there just in case so it's really important that you think of these things let me see here we got a couple good morning miss Tammy and she says whoop it just went way gone on me stay here there we go Tammy says I used to hunt but now leave it to hubby he isn't going this season son-in-law hunts bow and rifle but hasn't made it out this season yet daughter hunted before baby but not now I grew up in a hunting family I absolutely love hunting you know so many people frown upon it and frown like 
there's a lot of animal rights activists that would disagree with me, but um, it's really important to maintain the population of the animals because there's a lot of disease and a lot of sickness that goes through the animals and if we if they get too populated you, you run into problems and um, it is really important the Idaho has been going through a lot of different um, decision making uh, both in hunting and in trapping to regulate our uh, populations and to keep things in check here and you know you're the states that's why we buy our tags that's why we um, go that avenue because they're doing all kinds of research to make sure that we are not uh, depleting the animals which by no means we are we but that has happened in the past and but it's important and and by doing this I mean honestly guys we love our elk and our deer we were just blessed with some beef and it was really good but it just doesn't compare to elk and and even the venison out here and a lot of people are fearful of wild game in the regard that it tastes gamey and it and it doesn't taste good but I'll tell you what low and slow and you will have some of the best meat you have ever had and um, we're very grateful to be able to do things this way it saves us a lot of money I it, it's a lot of work because we um, harvest our own animals we butcher our own animals and and so forth but it's it's so rewarding and I see such amazing things when I'm out where do you guys see the video from yesterday yesterday or the day before it's two days ago it's a blur but um, <laughs> got to see some really awesome stuff and that's how it goes Tammy I when my kids were young I had to back out too I wasn't able to get out hunting then but I grew up in a hunting family I love archery season um, I haven't gotten out for archery since my illness but I am hoping I have a long bow and a compound bow and I would really really love to get back into archery there is just something whew, really awesome about archery hunting <laughs> because you're so close to the animal when you have to take it and it's just um, it's real personal I don't know it's just I really really enjoy that and um, and not that hunting with a rifle um, isn't fun but there's something really um, more challenging to hunting with a bow and uh, and I just like that time of year of course here it's pretty warm it's for our archery season it's been quite warm and it makes it hard when you're harvesting an animal and we like to hang our animals for a while so that they um, age a little bit and it's hard to do that when it's warm good morning miss Kelly she said there are already there has already been three grizzly attacks on hunters this season in Montana Wow and the season just started yeah that's crazy and and they're starting to come over the divide here too they've been seen in in some of the mountains not too far from here so it is really really important that you guys are protecting yourselves and prepared um, when you're out there not only just carrying a rifle but you know bear spray um, is a huge huge benefit to have um, I like hunting with the mountain man's 44 uh, a raging bull with a pistol and I really like hunting with that and also you know having that out in the field when we're out there too because you just you don't know if they're gonna come into the shot Chad says that's why everyone needs a Traer wilderness fire piston <laughs> exactly exactly very useful and handy and will start fires in the rain and snow Kelly says even though we raise our own beef we still prefer wild game we have talked about actually raising our own meats um, on the other side of selling this house and uh, there is definitely something to a good marbly fatty steak that you won't find with an elk and that fat is not the same as the beef fat so I and and a good chuck roast that is my favorite it's probably the worst cut of meat off of a, a cow but I love the chuck roast they're just so good George says recommend any serious hunters consider take a survival class they offer a lot of useful information on how to survive in the wilderness even if you are 
hunting but a few miles from camp. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you do not have a background in wilderness survival or you're not very familiar, you don't get out much, on our YouTube channel you will find a lot of videos on wilderness survival, fire starting, um, sterilizing your water, building shelters with what's around you. Um, that's something that as a family we've practiced for years is just getting the mountain boy out and teaching him how to find things in the wilderness that you can both start fires with as well as build shelters with and just reading the land. Uh, a lot of the time um, the reason things go south when people are hunting and possibly trapping is that they get turned around in the woods so they get displaced and out here it's just vast. It's, it's really vast and um, it's just important to know how to uh, sustain yourself in a situation like that and having extra food on you too, you know, snack bars and stuff and in my survival pack I carry seeds and I carry chia seeds. I, I carry vegetable seeds to be planted um, in the event that something turns long term and I carry chia seeds because a teaspoon or a tablespoon of chia seeds will sustain you for 24 hours. Um, they're packed with so many nutrients and, and because of how they expand and gel, um, they, they sustain, they can easily sustain the body for 24 hours and it's something light and easy to carry, very simple. So just knowing this stuff and, and, and practicing this stuff. I can't express that enough. You know, there's so many people that have the, have bought survival packs offline and it comes and it's all contained and it has everything in it, but they never open it. They never practice using any of the things. They get to a, a situation and they start pulling stuff out and don't even know what it is, how to use it, how to operate it. And, and that's really, really important. I mean, we have practiced starting fires spring, summer, fall, and winter because you're running into a variety of different elements, um, rain, snow, you know. And if you can start a fire in the rain or in the snow, you can start a fire anytime. But it's important to practice that because it it's not easy. Even if you have a lighter, a lighter does not ensure that you are going to be able to start a fire if you don't have dry tinder around you or know where to look for the dry tinder when everything else is wet. So it's really important. Like in my um, day pack, I have a tin with cotton cloth in it and also charred cotton cloth in it. I have um, some fat wood in there. I have a fair seam rod. My fire kit is very extensive because that's one thing that you want to make sure you have a backup and multiple um, items to, to make a fire. Um, knowing how to do a bow drill and a friction fire. Um, the fire piston too, uh, like Chad had mentioned. Um, our multi-flame tool is a fire piston, so it enables you to get an ember um, in any weather, uh, typically on the first, second try. Uh, so that is something useful to have on hand, and that is a multi-purpose tool. That's another thing. Having things in your kits that are multi-purpose are really important because, for one, it doesn't you, you don't require multiple tools to get the job done, which is excess weight and um, one of the other things I always recommend people having is a multi-tool, a Gerber, something like that. Um, but we always have knives, multiple knives on us. You know, things fail and we, we prefer to have like three of everything that's most important so that we have backups. So the Gerber has a knife in it. I have a pocket knife. I have my hunting knife. Um, stay here, missus. Stay here. Thank you. Um, so when, when you go out hunting, you don't want to just have your gear and your gun. It's just not safe. You, uh, when we go out, we always have at least a butt pack, and those butt packs are big. I don't have it out here with me. I, like I said, things have been crazy. I went from unloading my gear to coming out here and quickly doing this. So, um, But also, if you guys hunt 
and, and trap, be sure that you come to our page and share your progress photos for the year. It's always fun to see you know, how everybody's doing and share your, share your celebrations. Um, we're hoping maybe later today that we'll have bagged um, our elk. Uh, we, have, we have two tags to fill his and mine and then we have uh, our deer tags. So deer season is pretty long out here. I've seen a, a four point or a two by two, depending where you're from little buck um, showing himself for two of my hunts and it was really tempting uh, he would be very tender but um, I I figured I would wait I also didn't want to taint my elk area I want to get my elk first and then and then get my deer and and just being cautious when you're out there being sure that you're wearing orange um, we there's a lot of people sadly that give hunting and trapping a bad name because they don't practice good ethics and skills while they're out there and Idaho has been found there are so many camps set up out here and so many hunters and it is vast but it you never know where someone else is so it's important to be careful it's important to wear orange to make sure that if somebody does come in on your hunting area that you make sure they see you and don't just sit there and like kind of camouflage yourself make sure they see you wave your hat something so that they're not shooting you know something doesn't come in between the two of you and they shoot um, just be safe and use common sense that's really really important when you're out um, and and it's always good this is a rule of our home nobody is allowed to leave here unless somebody else knows what direction you're headed in and what your intentions are and what your time frame might be so that we have a starting position and a place to start looking if they don't show up back home um, again like I said it's vast out here and that me that's not just hunting and trapping season that's if somebody's running an errand we you know that's our rule because of it being vast if you get a flat tire some spots uh, we're in a 30 mile radius right now where there's no cell service so it's important to be aware of your surroundings uh, protect yourself in your surroundings and and think ahead in your surroundings even traveling in a vehicle this time of year um, having extra gear having extra clothes when I when I took the mountain boy to school there was a lot of extra warm gear in there, a sleeping bag and, and um, I think the mountain man's coveralls and his extra jackets were in there for me. Um, so you know being prepared is something that you really need to think of at a lot of different levels and once you start doing that and you start thinking like okay so hunting and trapping I need to do this, when I'm in my car I need to do this, when I'm hiking I need to do this you know as you keep expanding that your mind will start thinking that way in a preparedness aspect as to what your needs are in all situations which is really 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 important so so be sure that you guys share your hunting and trapping experiences with us and the mountain man is starting his trap line series on YouTube Forgive me, I'm very behind with the, uh, using the generator. We've been trying to be conservative and the internet's not on all the time, so I've got a lot of edited videos that just need to be uploaded. So as soon as the solar's back up, hopefully tomorrow, I will be uploading a whole lot of videos. So stay tuned. Um, I wanted to mention to you also, if anybody is looking for somewhere to tithe um, or to donate, my friend Starry um, is taking a trip on the 18th to Georgia to a wellness center and um, this is so awesome, this is such a divine gift to her and she will be traveling so she needs um, travel expenses and um, is just somebody that's in a situation that we could all uh, contribute to. So um, her PayPal email is starryhilder at gmail.com and that's below so you can utilize that if you are looking for somebody to tithe or gift um, something else I wanted to offer you guys somebody gifted us with a hello fresh box um, you have the choice of um, meats and vegetables but because meats are very tough for me especially 
if they have GMOs or toxins of any kind, um, it just would wreak havoc on me. So we went with just the vegetables to give it a try. But um, I am able to offer you $40 towards your first box. And um, there is a coupon code, a pr promo code down below. You just need to go to treyerwilderness.com slash HelloFresh. And, and then use that promo code and you'll get $40 off if you are interested in giving that a try. If you are in need of vegetables or meats or you are better at um, being able to meal plan that way, uh, it comes with the recipe cards and so forth so you can check that out. Also, um, I, I don't have a physical copy to share yet and I don't have the picture on my iPad. To show you but you might want to use the link down below um, just a little heads up and look in your local stores for the current issue of the new pioneer which will be coming out uh, probably next week I believe is when it's supposed to hit the newsstands you can purchase it online and it's a magazine that I highly recommend um, I have been blessed to be writing for them since 2012 and uh, we have been tremendously blessed. When I, I'm going to share this with you. When I wrote my first, very first article ever, I was in the middle of a writing class and the teacher suggested that I query or submit ideas to the magazines that I like. So I did. And um, three days later, I was contacted by the new pioneer editor who is an absolute dear sweet friend of mine. And she was interested in my article. And not only was she interested in my article, but my very first article went into the 2013 issue and they featured us on the cover. And that started my career in writing as well as writing for The New Pioneer. And uh, she contacted me about two months ago and asked if I would be interested in writing an article on our renovations and our future uh, plans and uh, they sent the photographer out once again. So uh, God is good and we have been blessed with a huge opportunity and uh, hoping that that will also help us to sell our home. Um, by the way, in the absolute total chaos since last week, um, we did have somebody return to look at our house. So there is uh, options there. I'm not sure what's going to happen there, but that was really exciting as well. So, um, excited. Very, very excited. And um, so be sure to check out the new Pioneer. Um, it was really cool. Uh, they came and shot the photos and a week later Austin found out that he was leaving. So timing was everything. Uh, we got really good photos with him in them and um, the photo they were going for was to show our progression and uh, Austin really clearly makes that progression very visible because he was only 13 when we moved here. So when we took those other photos he was, was 12 so he was uh, 15 when we took the first uh, photos. So pretty neat and really an awesome opportunity. I'm very blessed to write for them but their magazine has all kinds of preparedness, uh, homesteading, uh, do-it-yourself, you name it kind of stuff in it and there's a lot of information to be gained so definitely check that out. Um, let me see here. Oh and <laughs> George said, and check out Trayer Wilderness YouTube channel for tons of information. Thank you. <laughs> and Shelly says, when I lived in northern Alberta, I would get it would get as low as minus 40 Celsius. So when I drove my half hour to work, I would be dressed in snow pants and a coat. The whole gear just in case. I drove off the road or was in an accident. It only takes minutes to freeze. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, you know... It's it, some people worry about what they look like when they show up at work and they would never dress that way but you know what I'm sitting here in my hunting pants you know I if I go out there I, like I said I took off seven layers when I came back here I had like nine layers on on top and two on the bottom 
my my legs usually stay warm I had my long underwear on and my wool pants but my top always gets cold and once my top and my shoulders start to get cold I start to shiver and that's just it it makes your body sore and it's just not it's not good and I want to be warm when I'm out there because I know I'm gonna be out there for a while and again if I shoot something I'm gonna be out there a heck of a lot longer so making sure you're warm and making sure uh, you're dressed properly is so important awesome awesome share why thank you Miss Mona <laughs> Shelly says, I have that on hold at my local pharmacy and I cannot wait to read it. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I was blessed to have a couple articles in that issue, so I'm very excited and uh, hope to have quite a few more. And now that we are empty nesters, and I think I shared this last week, I don't know, I shared it sometime, maybe in one of the videos I did this week, I don't know, it's been such a blur. Um, it's the first time in 26 years that I am not responsible for a child. And it's a weird feeling. It's also, you know, an, an awesome feeling. You know, there's a bit of freedom there, and there's mixed emotions at times. But I'm, my boy is doing awesome. He's thriving, and although it's slow and boring, it's good for him because then he'll be forced and want to dive into what he's working on. So, you know, everything happens for a reason, which reminds me to say to you all. Um, and I think Shelly watched this. I watched a movie this weekend called Trust. It was a Prime, uh, Amazon Prime video. And um, it was really about keeping the faith and, um, and trusting no matter, no matter what. And, and that can be hard for a lot of people, uh, especially if you worry and you struggle and uh, you struggle with change, different things like that. It can really be a challenge to trust all the time but I just it's such an awesome place to be when you can finally get to a comfortable place where you are so comfortable in life regardless what comes your way because you know that God is going to take care of everything and it may not be in your timing it may not be how you expected it to be but it's gonna be amazing and this movie one of the big lines in this movie is it's part of the plan so Today when we went out and we checked the trap, um, one of the mountain man's traps didn't go off. There were coyote prints around the trap, but it didn't go off, which was actually a good thing because had it gone off, he would have had to reset it and it would have, it would have uh, educated the coyote. So, but you know, some people would be very upset with that, but I just looked at him and I said, hey, it's part of the plan. A bigger one's going to come by tonight, step on it, and especially since there's other tracks there, and, and he'll get that one. Oh, thank you, Shelly. She says, you have raised and prepared him for life. He will do fine. I appreciate that. Thank you. And it has been neat this week. There have been certain things that he has said that he observed at school, and um, his take on it and his thoughts on it. We're just, I was just like, yes, you know, he, he listened, he, he heard, he's understanding. And, and that's really cool, you know, when, you're, when you do raise your children up and they do step out on their own and, you know, you thought that they weren't listening, but they clearly were. So, you know, that's, that's our job. We've got to raise them up good and, and then let them go and let them spread their wings. So I'm real excited for him. Shelly says, Trust was well worth the watch and to thank him even for things you may not w want to happen as it is his plan, not your own. Exactly. I loved, you'll appreciate this, in the movie, um, the, the main character uh, was thanking God for things that were broken and, and his children totally didn't get it at first. But that's just it and that's what I wanted to talk about today is, you know, We've got to remember to seek God all the time, not just when everything's falling apart. Um, I mean, it's, it's okay to do that, but the thing is when we seek Him and when we trust in Him in the good times, the bad times, and the ugly, that is what builds your faith muscles. That is what builds your trust. And that is what builds the relationship that is gonna see you through and that's gonna get you to a place of really, really strong faith. Strong faith in that when it falls apart, it falls apart. 
On my way up to um, Austin school, I started having truck troubles last week. I think I shared that a little bit last week. And I instantly prayed. I instantly rebuked the enemy because I knew he was making an effort to keep us from getting Austin to school because I still believe that he's going to be a light there. And I, I contacted my prayer warriors and they got on it. And um, the first time it happened was I was very, very fortunate with the truck um, because had there been traffic behind me, I probably either wouldn't be here to tell you about it or I'd be in a hospital bed because there would have been no avoiding getting hammered because my truck was actually losing power. And when it did it the first time, it did it so drastically that it pushed us, that it, it brought us forward in the seats, that it just dropped in power. And it did that about two or three times on my way up there, but my goal was to get there. If I had to camp out there, I had to camp out there. I had, my, I had stuff. And, and I was also at a place where the kids are learning how to repair diesels. So, you know, <laughs> I think I was at a good spot. But, um, and on the way home, it did it like two times. And I think that it is actually something to repair. But the thing is, I could have gotten really discouraged and I could have, I mean, this is our only vehicle. And I had just enough money to get him there and to get me back. And, and I trusted God. I trusted God that he was going to take care of it all, and he did. I didn't get worked up. I didn't get nerved up. Uh, once that happened, I just got cautious. I got cautious, and I made sure that um, I was spacing myself away from other vehicles and that I wasn't in a situation or in a position that if it did it again that I would have to you know, be worried. I was constantly looking for places to pull over. You know, it was a little, uh, I don't want to say that it was, a well, not aggressive, but just um, observant driving maybe is the word I want to use. But we have to, we have to trust God and, and Kelly nailed that. That's exactly it, is that it's His plan, not ours. And when you start to live life in the regard that it's his and you just roll with it oh my goodness that's why when I get on here and when you see me anywhere I have a smile on my face because I am NOT getting hung up in in disappointments because I don't have expectations and I've talked to you guys about that before you know when you can remove expectations from your life uh, you will eliminate disappointments because that's where the disappointments typically come from. I want to share these things with you today. Um, this is from Jesus Calling a couple days back, I believe it is. Trust me enough to let things happen without striving to predict or control them. Relax and refresh yourself in the light of my everlasting love. My love light never dims, yet you are often unaware of my radiant presence. When you project yourself into the future, rehearsing what you will do or say, you are seeking to be self-sufficient, to be adequate without my help. This is a sub subtle sin so common that it is usually slips by unnoticed. The alternative is to live fully in the present, depending on me each moment. Rather than fearing your inadequacy, rejoice in my abundant supply. Train your mind to seek my help continually, even when you feel confident to handle something by yourself. Don't divide your life into things you can do by yourself and things that require my help. Instead, learn to rely on me in every situation. This discipline will enable you to enjoy life more and face each day confidently. And then there's two verses that it shares. Uh, Philippians 4.19 and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And then Psalms 37, 3 through 6. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. There is so much to be said in living a life for him and totally and completely trusting the outcome. George says, got to run. Have a great day and good luck on your elk hunt. Thank you. Uh, feel better. Thank you for joining us and love you guys. Have a good day too, George. Good morning, Miss Angela. Okay. So when we learn, okay, I shared something on Facebook today that said, 
um, to pray about everything in life if you want to make sure you're heading down the right path. And there is not any decision making made in this house without praying about it first. Our days are planned based on how God directs us. And I know that sounds crazy um, to a lot of people. You may not understand that. But I've got a huge to-do list every day. I sometimes am limited. I could be fretting and panicking because I don't have access to the internet like I should right now to be able to get things done. But you know what? He's giving me peace in that and I'm doing the best I can and, and getting done what I can get done as I'm able. What isn't getting done, I trust will get done when it needs to be and I can't panic over it. It is what it is. These are my current circumstances. Now, I could choose to be totally disheveled, totally unraveled, and, and stressing myself out. Tell me what that's going to solve. It's going to make me sick is what it's going to do. And that's why I avoid stress at all costs. I, uh, I, I do what I can do, and, and I know my limitations. But God... God knows best what we need, what path we're supposed to be on, what direction we're supposed to go in, what and who is important in our lives. And when we learn to commune with Him, not just in the bad times, but all the time, He will make it clear to us, you know, where we need to be, what we need to be doing, how we need to be spending our time. And, and, and it's real important, you know, sometimes in life you just hit this total abundance. Right now, I am just flying by the seat of my pants to keep up with everything. Um, for those of you that have messaged and I haven't been able to get back to you, I will. Life has just been really, really crazy and I am having to uh, just run in a million different directions. But, like I said, I'm finding peace in that because God is directing my path um, and, and I'm only one person. I can only do so much. So we need to learn to seek Him and to, you know, when, when we have limited time or things are really crazy, you know, we really need to seek Him as to where our attention should be going. Now this is something else that I just thought was so awesome. Okay. Anything I've asked you to do, I've given you the grace to do. Think about that. Anything I've asked you to do, I've given you the grace to do. There are a lot of times where we are all walking in chaos. I know Kelly has been spending her summer uh, just going bonkers on our homestead uh, with all the chores and all the things. And the, and the thing is, sometimes these are the seasons we have to go through. I'm doing the same here right now. And the thing is, God will bring us to it. And God will give us enough grace and strength to get through it. But here's the thing, and this is the thing that I really like about this statement. If the grace is not there, come to me and make sure that what you're doing is what I have called you to do. So how often are we off chasing something and it's not going well, things are going wrong, it's upside down and sideways, and it's because we're not supposed to be doing it, but we didn't seek His direction in it. So that's what this is saying. We need to remember to seek Him and seek His direction for us because sometimes, and this is the enemy sometimes, taking us down other paths, enticing us and making us think that we need to be doing one thing when we should really be doing the other. So when we make it an effort to you know, take time with God every morning and seek the direction of our day and ask Him to guide our steps. We can be sure that we are going to have enough grace because He's taking us down the path He wants us on and He's giving us and going to sustain us to do that project. Or we can go off and, and do our to-do list and panic because it's five miles long and, and at the end of the day be disturbed because we didn't get it done and the whole day was really hard. Or we could do what He sustains us to do, get done what is necessary and sometimes when we follow his path that whole to-do list will get done it's just his timing his way not ours 
So I, I don't do anything without seeking his direction anymore at all. And I've, I've, I've learned and I'm trying to teach you because there is so much benefit in it. So then it says, do, don't carry things that are not yours to carry. Give them to me. Live out your life doing what I am calling you to do, taking one season at a time. And that's it. Life is seasons. And during certain seasons, we may go through illness or sickness, or we may be nurturing a child or teaching a child. Then we might progress to finding ourselves, del delving into creativity and painting and doing new things and writing, whatever. But there's all kinds of seasons of life and we can either go through them in a huge upheaval or we can go through them peacefully and just realizing that he has us where he wants us. You know, there's going to be good times and there's going to be bad times always. You know, when it's, when it's good, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I'm not going to enjoy the good because I'm anticipating the bad is coming. It might be, but you know what? I am not going to waste a second of my time thinking about what could be coming when I'm here living in the now. And that's what I'm doing. I am living in the now. I am living in his grace. I am being who and what I can be at this time and, and taking great strength in that. Our life is constantly um, up and down and all over. We don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next. And you can choose to be totally disheveled and, and stressed by that, or you can learn to find it an adventure. If, it, if we wouldn't be finding that as an adventure right now, I would be sitting here talking doom and gloom to you. I got, I got a message today from from somebody and it made me really think about this um, something that we need to do also not just seeking God in all of our seasons and in the good and the bad but also seeing the blessings in the good and the bad now that movie true or trust that Kelly and I watched it really really um, excuse me focuses on that it focuses really heavy on that, that you find blessings in things that are broken. That like today, you know, Coyote didn't get caught in his trap. You know, you could be like, uh, you know, letting that really uh, dictate your day, um, dictate your mood, where it's part of the plan. That is my new phrase, Kelly, that is my new phrase. It is part of the plan because God's plan is always going to be bigger and better than ours and when things don't go your way and when things aren't exactly the way you want them you know there's I, I truly believe there's purpose in everything so finding blessings in the muck and mire <coughs> stay here stay here stay here come here good girl come here Come here. Listen. It's Bane. Come, just listen to me and come here. Come here. There's other friends up here hunting and they all have dogs, so. That's a good girl, thank you. Come on, come lay down with me. Thank you for protecting me. Good girl. Okay, so, um, I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> to stay here um, let me see here Angela says last night my husband said we are hemorrhaging animals meaning we are paying so much out to feed too many animals that it's going to undo us my husband wants me to magically sell most of the animals and I have no time or clue of what to do I was just praying about it before this well we will help you pray about that Angela um, that is hard uh, to have to part with animals. We had to uh, get rid of our goats. We got rid of um, our horse and we had we butchered our chickens at the beginning of the year. So it is hard having to get rid of animals or to downsize but sometimes that's what you have to do. Um, I don't know if you have yard sale pages on Facebook for your area but that is how I have been selling most of our things here and the marketplace. Um, it's a really great way to, to sell things. So 
Um, but we will be praying for you. You can also put it in your local papers and on, on the boards at the, we have a local store and the local post office where there's bulletin boards, that stuff like that can be posted. But um, I'm sure you could probably find some local people that might be interested, but it's still hard. And it's time consuming. Good grief, selling stuff is time consuming. I have the Mountain Boys truck, van, and camper. We sold the camper, but till you find the right person and, and that you go through, that was the other thing. Oh my goodness, while we were driving and on my way back home, and since I've been home, uh, having to, when I am on available on the internet, I'm having to check my work stuff, and then I'm having to respond to people that were selling things or wanting to buy things, and it is time consuming. But it, it, it can be done, and those are great resources. And we will be praying. Kelly says, I was stressing about getting all my Christmas stuff done, but I realized that I can buy a few. Trust made me realize times when we hit a place of stress and worry, if we step back and just pray and, and talk to God, you know, um, through that time, oftentimes I get real good clarity. And, and that's, that's exactly exactly what happened for you um, you know when we take that time to seek him for for even if even if we aren't actually looking for clarity we're just like talking to him in, in distress it's okay it's okay just stay here it's okay thank you <laughs> but when we talk to him in our distressed moments oftentimes the answers will either come at that time or they will will come over the next couple hours or <coughs> days. That's a good girl, but you're really loud. Stay here and stop. 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 <coughs> Just stay here. Just stay here. Just stay here. Somebody's run off and they're whistling him back, so she's just having a field day. All right, so here's, here's something else. Your time and talents are a great value to the kingdom of God. In order to step into your calling, which may change with the seasons of life, you will need to learn to discern what you can't do and what distracts or, dis or drains you. Then you can be free to do what you're called to do. Look at what season you're in right now and live it where you're needed most. I can't express to you guys enough to really pay attention and to discern, you know, who you are following. Are you following God's will? Are you following your will? Are you distracted or being drained um, by things, by people, by, uh, by yourself? You know, sometimes you can greatly, if you're distraught, stressed, over concerned about things you know it's like I said earlier if you are predicting and thinking into the future and you're not thinking in the now you could be one of your greatest drains and distractions because you are so worried about something that may not even happen how many times have you worried about things and they actually never happened I did it I used to do it. I don't do that anymore. That's a waste of my time and my energy and God's blessings are so much greater. I don't have time for that. But I was there. I used to worry about all kinds of stuff. Finances, kids, I worry about all kinds of stuff. I don't have any worries anymore. And when I say that, I am dead serious. Since I got sick, I no longer worry about anything. Anything. Whoa. Bald eagle just flew through. There goes a golden. Can you see him? I hope. That is so cool. That's actually two bald eagles. All right, stay here. Were you guys able to see that? <laughs> it flew right over the treetops. I, I mean, I could see its eye. That was too cool. That's my life. This is so awesome here. I love life. And God is so good. That's the mountain man sign that life is good. I see heart shapes. Here's something else. You can't do everything, so do what no one else but you can do. That's a good one to uh, think about and, and stick with. 
And that's, that's something, you know, I used to feel that way, like I had to do everything. Um, and it wasn't that I didn't want to delegate, I was just so used to doing everything. When I learned to delegate, life became so much nicer. Because you can't do everything, and God's calling us to do specific things, and if we are clawing in to have so many, you know, our hands in so many pots, we won't be successful at what he wants us to do. So we need to be able to discern where our time needs to be spent. And sometimes when our time is limited, like mine is right now, it's hard. I've got a million things I could be doing and I've got, I've got people to get in touch with and I've got, I've got stuff that has to get done, stuff that could wait. It's, you know, you really need to be able to discern where your time needs to be spent most. And, and it's important too in saying that because not everybody's organized is when we do do that and we seek God it helps us to stay organized you know I know that there are some of you that aren't I'm 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 organized praise God thank you for giving me that gift and my superpower because it does make life a whole lot easier when you can when you can really discern that and and also uh, keep yourself organized and know what you need to be doing I use workflowy which is in the description somewhere and Evernote those are my two go-to apps that I use all the time for everything to keep track of everything. off what I've done and what I haven't done and and so forth um, hopefully I didn't just lose you guys give me some thumbs up or hearts because something weird just went on my screen so hopefully hopefully we're good I am such a worrier it's such a habit you don't realize you're doing it I know it's lack of trust in God well and the thing is it's like any habit Angela you know we like I said, I was a worrier. I was a worrier. And it is such a blessing to no longer be that worrier and to have that trust. Um, and the more we trust, the more we seek Him. And I think that the biggest part of that is that when we're seeking Him in the good and the bad, because often for, excuse me, for a good bit of my life, I only was seeking Him when things were crazy and I wasn't seeking him during the good and you know you that's where we have these dry spells where we you know suddenly we feel we feel lost and that's why because we're not in tune we're not communicating we're not in that relationship and that should be our first relationship and just like okay this is an example Angela um, I wanted to journal every day um, and I've never been able to do that. And this year I wanted to make that a habit. I just had to switch journals because I filled my first one already. So I am, I'm totally stoked with that. I, it is something I do not let waver. Um, granted, I didn't keep up with it while I was traveling with the mountain boy entirely. But um, as soon as I was able, I did. And, but it bothers me. It's, it's, that, it's now that much of a habit that I really want to make sure I'm doing it. So my suggestion to you is this. Ooh, I got to sneeze. When, <laughs> when you catch yourself worrying about something, I want you to think about two things. One, that you're doing it. And two, is what you're worrying about anything you can control? For one, you're, you're aware that you're worrying. And two, you're kind of calling yourself out. Because if it's something that you can't control, don't waste mind space on it. It's just like saying, uh, well, this is kind of funny. This is what I was going to say, so I'm just going to say it. It's like saying dirty words to yourself. You know, we all do it in our heads. We, oh, you're not pretty, you're fat, you're whatever, you know. We say these things to ourselves in our heads. Well, it's no different. And the only way you're going to change that is that you're catching yourself while you're doing it and saying something nice instead. So at the same token, when you start to catch yourself worrying, you need to turn it into something positive. So turn it into going and doing something different, focusing your efforts somewhere else, but put a positive spin on that somehow. Um, even if that means just realizing you're doing it and telling yourself I'm not a worrier and go find something to fill your head and your time
Okay, looks like there might be something being spoken that I'm not aware of. So, uh, like you guys are having a conversation and I can't see it. So I'm not, I'll just let that go and I'll check that when I am done. Okay, let me see. Is there anything else I wanted to share with you guys today? No, that was that. But please be aware of all of our prayer requests. And I want to, I want to give you guys food for thought, I guess. Um, if you know people that are struggling and need help, whether it's financial, food, whatever, um, we are trying, we're, we are expanding our Treyer Wilderness Ministry a little bit. So if you know of people that are in need, I would love for you to reach out to me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com one so that we can add them to the prayer list and two maybe that we could um, as a community be able to help them um, as I mentioned my friend Starry I'm gonna start doing that I'm gonna start mentioning people that are have specific needs um, the other thing is with the HelloFresh if you guys give that a try because you give it a try I will get free HelloFresh. Instead of us using them for ourselves, I can gift that. And we decided that we would like to start gifting that to people that might be in need. So if you know of such people, and or you yourself are in need of something, you know, um, something that I shared today was, may God bless you with the things you're struggling with and the things that you're not talking about. You know, many of us go through life and we struggle greatly, but we don't discuss it with anybody. We take it up with God or we, we try to deal with it ourselves. If you're dealing with it with God, that's okay. But sometimes it's, as a community, a good wholesome community, there are abilities of others to help and nurture. Whether it's moral support, whether it's food, whether it's financial, whether it's prayers, whatever it may be, we are growing an amazing community here and I don't want it to just be limited to here. I want to, we want to expand, we want to, we want to uh, do more and there's more in the works. Um, we have been talking about a lot of different things and a lot of different ways to feed the flock and to be a light and to... Um, do God's will so as part of that I wanted to mention that today so keep that in mind and if you have prayers or you know somebody that is in need of prayers um, please don't hesitate you can comment here you can comment on YouTube you can email us at prayers at treyerwilderness.com and keep in mind that if this is something personal to you you do not need to share the details with me or anybody else. All you need to do is say, I need prayer, or my husband and I need prayer, my family needs prayer, my children need prayer, whatever it is. Um, we don't need to know the details. Too much in, in this world, it bothers me to see all the pettiness and, and people talking behind other people's backs and... and uh, Things that travel down the line that get so taken out of proportion sometimes and one thing I'm very grateful for is right here in this community we don't have that I don't want that but I see a lot of it and and I know that there are a lot of fearful people people that are afraid to connect with others and reach out to others and open up to others because they've been burned and hurt I mean I have too but I'm learning how to gain my strength and my grace and my mercies from God so and to heal in those situations but there's many people that don't know how to do that so I want to be able to help everybody that needs help so if you have if you have prayers but you don't want to um, mention the details you don't have to feel like you that's a necessity we will be happy to pray for you regardless my battery is dying so I'm gonna quick say a prayer here okay Papa, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for the many blessings that you are bestowing upon so many of us. I thank you for your hand and your grace and your mercies and helping the mountain man and I get through this crazy time as well as so many out there that are going through similar things. 
And I just thank you for keeping your hand on our mountain boy. I thank you for what you're going to do in Terry and June's life. I thank you for healing Chad and what you're going to do in his life and how you're going to renew him. I thank you for the amazing news you're going to give Courtney and Kelly and Mike. I thank you for what you are going to do in each and everyone's lives that are watching today. I thank you for how you are going to help Angela to no longer worry and catch herself and realize that she no longer has anything to worry about because you're fully and totally in control. I ask that you put your healing hand on Mona and Ken and I just ask that you uh, strengthen my prayer warriors. They are mighty and strong and I just ask that you renew them and keep them all healthy and strong and and just how you're going to continue to work through them and I just ask that you be with everyone strengthen them love them heal them and let them feel your loving arms wrapped around them there is nothing greater in this life than a relationship with you Papa and I just wish that for everyone I thank you for what you're gonna do and I thank you for the elk that you're going to provide for us this evening and just give everyone strength and may they continue to seek you. I ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Okay guys, I am going to go nap for a few minutes and then I'm going to get out hunting again. So look forward to seeing you guys next week and uh, if you need anything in the meantime, Feel free to reach out. Hopefully tomorrow I will have my solar back up and running uh, and uh, have power consistently 24-7. Uh, thank you, Miss Kelly. Thank you, thank you. And right back at you. And someone else, thank you for saying that, Kelly. I just totally recalled. I would like to ask that you guys please pray for a young man named Malachi and for a young girl named Jayla. Please, please pray for them and uh, pray for both physical and mental healing for Malachi. Um, he, I'm just going to, that's all I'm going to say. So, um, but please, please keep them in your prayers. And uh, just thank you guys for joining me. I love you all dearly. I wish you a good week and I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. You guys take care and God bless.